And Esther said, the adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman. Then Haman was afraid before the king and the queen. And Habona, one of the chamberlains, said before the king, Behold also the gallows fifty cubits high, which Haman had made for Mordecai, who spoke good for the king, standeth in the house of Haman. Then the king said, Hang him their own. Hold on. He made the gallows, the thing that cut somebody's neck off, he made it for another man. He got caught. They say, what well, he made to cut off another man's neck, we're going to cut his neck off with it. Mm. Okay. Then the king said, hang him there on. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath pacified. Verse chapter 8, verse 2. And the king took off his ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it unto Mordecai. And Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. I want to use as a title today's message, one thing I love about God is he always makes sure people get what they deserve. One thing I love about God is he always makes sure people get what they deserve. Look at them and say, neighbor, God always makes sure that people get what they deserve. Now, we have two main people in this dynamic illustration of liberty and justice for all, Brother Hardy. We have a low-down, lying, conniving, and scheming man named Haman who have somehow schemed his way to the top of the king's MVP, VIP list. And then we have a righteous, committed, and principled man named Mordecai who had turned himself and found himself nowhere on the king's radar as being a person that the king wanted to affiliate himself with in the beginning. In the beginning, it seemed like life was unfair when the wicked rules over the righteous. In the beginning, it seems like people that are not better than you are getting ahead in front of you. Somebody shout, in the beginning. It seemed like that the good person was falling and the bad person was succeeding. But tell somebody, God knows how to make everything all right. Uh-huh, yes, he does. God knows how to give everybody what they deserve sooner or later. Oh, my man Haman got busted. He got on a run just like OJ. His biggest downfall was he was a fool. That was his biggest downfall. When you at the top and you fighting somebody at the bottom, you a fool. You don't fight with people that's below you. They will bring you down to their level. I don't care how right you are. Don't fight with folks that are below you because that turns you into a fool. When you're trying to challenge and pick a fight with everybody, you become a fool. When you are supreme pizza and you fight a personal pan pizza, you a fool. What does a supreme pizza have to do with being jealous of a personal pan pizza? That's how Haman was. He was a supreme pizza and he's up here fighting a personal pan pizza. Baby, you got to know who you are. But when you are inherently a bad person, just like the cream filling in a Twinkie, your bad, your evil got to come out. And when it comes out, God is going to bust you out. You're going to be as messed up as an umbrella with holes in it when God starts raining his justice upon you. Preach holy ghosts. Because one thing that I love about God is that everybody get what they deserve. I love that about God. Everybody get what they deserve. Oh, God. Because of that, you can fool me for a minute. You can get over me well, over me for a minute. But sooner or later, God's going to make sure that you get what you deserve and I get what I deserve. Preach Holy Ghost. If I deserve to be blessed, God won't allow anybody to curse me. Good God Almighty. If I deserve to be blessed. If I deserve a good person in my life, God not going to let a bad person stay in my life for too long. Why? Because everybody get 
what they deserve. You don't got to worry about people getting over on you. You don't got to worry about people tricking you. Because one thing about God is he going to let what's going to come out. It's going to come out. Oh, my God. Tell somebody, I'm going to get what I deserve. I'm going to get what I deserve. Now, if you want to get what you deserve on a good path, then you got to make sure, baby, that you're righteous. You got to make sure that you're doing right before the Lord. Because if you're doing right before the Lord, he's going to open up doors you don't even see. Good God Almighty. If you're doing right before the Lord, you don't have to worry about people taking you for granted. You don't got to worry about people abusing you. You don't got to worry about people hurting you, lying on you, cheating on you, backstabbing you. If you do what's right, you're going to get what you deserve. <laughs> and what you deserve is to see your enemy, your footstool. Preach. Holy Ghost. I deserve to see my enemy, my footstool. And if you do what's right, you're going to see your enemy, your footstool. Can I give you three cold-blooded examples of God making sure people always get what they deserve? I'm going to give you three cold-blooded examples that God always makes sure that people get what they deserve. She like they cold-blooded. Three cold-blooded examples. Number one, Job got what he deserved. Job got what he deserved. Listen to Job 2 and 9. His wife came unto him and said, do, do you retain your integrity? God done took everything from you. He done killed our children. And you up here still going to church. You up here still talking about give God our tithes and offering. Our tithes went from $2,000 a week to now $20 a month. And you up here talking about tithe. And we don't even have half food in our pantry. And you talking about give God what the little bit we can have left. Why don't you curse God and die, man? In Job 2, verse 11, now when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that was come upon him, they came, everyone from his own place, Elpenaz the Temanite, and Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Namanthite. For they had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. And when they had lifted up their eyes afar so off, they knew him. I said, that ain't Job. The Job we knew had ways in his head like he was brother Sean. And the, the, the Job we knew wore his little plaid pants like brother Sean. Who is this man with cut off pants looking like Tarzan? Who is this man that look like we don't even know who he is? He don't even have a a, 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 a sparkle in his eye. Who is this man? And they lifted up their voice and wept, and they rent everyone his manner and sprinkled dust upon their head toward heaven. They started crying for Job because he looked so bad. They started crying for Job because he was suffering so bad. But in Job 42 and 10, it said, And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. I told you, baby, when you do what's right before the Lord, if you take a lick and then keep on ticking, the people that's been crying about you, they're going to have to start getting prayers from you because God's going to turn that thing around if you deserve it. If you deserve it, God is going to turn your pain into pleasure. If you deserve it, God is going to turn your heartache to a hallelujah. If you deserve it, good God Almighty. Tell somebody, baby, don't feel sorry for me. No matter what it looks like I'm going through. Because I promise you, I'm going to get what I deserve. <laughs> Tell somebody, don't feel sorry for me. No matter what it looks like I'm going through. No matter how bad it looks like I'm suffering. No matter how look low it look like I have got no matter if my cars get repossessed don't feel sorry for me because the cream is going to rise to the top oh baby the cream going to rise to the top don't feel sorry for me because I promise you if I keep serving God if I keep praising God if I keep lifting up God I'm going to get I'm going to get what I deserve if you just stay right you're going to get what you deserve Listen, I've begged so many people, my God, man, so wait, you know, I begged so many people, my God, that, that the blessing was right in their face. And they, they would have opportunities to have everything their hearts desire. I begged so many people, just don't start, stay humble. Don't, don't start, don't start doing this slick stuff. Who was saying that Sunday school, Keisha? You see, don't start getting in there. I'm saying, I, I've seen God. Take 
get stuff from people right when they thought they had, you know, when people, they start thinking that, that it's theirs now. When people, they, they get a little cocky, they get an attitude, and they start slipping, and, and they start taking the small stuff for granted. They don't pay attention to details anymore because they think, oh, they got it going on now. They get a sloppy, you know. They, they, used, to, they used to check on you, the, the customer. They had great customer service, and now they got a lot of customers. They done forgot all about you. They start slipping a little bit. They start slipping a little bit. Then they start losing a little bit at a time. And I beg so many people, be serious. Stay humble. I've seen God snatch the type of blessings that's before you from people whose attitudes start getting like yours. I've seen people lose it and they wept like Esau and couldn't get it back. I put, and most of them don't even listen. Matter of fact, I haven't met one that listened. I haven't met one that paid attention to the warning that goes before destruction. When all you had to do was stay the same. Good God Almighty. Don't become crooked. Don't become slick. Because if you do, you're going to get what you deserve. And what you, what you deserve, God said, give it back to me. That's what you deserve. God said, give it back to me. Give it back. Good God Almighty. Job was a righteous man. And God gave him exactly what he deserved. His blessings all the way back. Let me give you the realest word ever heard, number 781. The realest word ever heard, number 781. When you're a good person going through bad things, it's a test to be blessed. When you're a bad person getting good things, it's as temporary as the month of February. Huh? When you're a good person going through bad things, it's a test to be blessed. But when you're a crooked person getting good things, baby, that stuff is as temporary as the month of February. And February is the shortest month of the year. That stuff ain't going to last long because you're going to eventually get what you deserve. Tell them to go and tell that. <laughs> uh, that was Kanita word last week. Go and tell that. Secondly, Goliath got what he deserved. Goliath, not only did Job get what he deserved, God turned his situation around and gave him the blessing. Second, Goliath, 1 Samuel 4, and there went forth a champion out of the camp of Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits in a span. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are ye come out to battle in array? Am not I a Philistine? And you serve as a Saul? Choose a man for you that I can come and fight with him. He said, go find somebody and let me whoop them up. <laughs> if you be able to fight with me and kill me, I will be your servant. My boys will be your servant. But if I prevail, y'all will be my servants. Then David said, who is this? Talking crazy about the kingdom of God? And David took his sword, drew it out of his shirt thereof, and slew him and cut his head off therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion dead, they fled. Goliath got what he deserved. Everybody that want to act big, tough, and bad, they get what they deserve. Everybody that want to be a bully, they get what they deserve. Everybody that think you so tough and you got it going on and can't nobody do nothing with you, you can't, you're going to get what you deserve. You're going to run into the wrong person. You keep thinking you big and bad. You're going to run into somebody that ain't going to talk to you. They're going to knock your head flat out because you think you're so big and bad. God, see, a saint, that's why Jesus said, you can turn another cheek, because I got somebody out in the street that ain't going to turn another cheek. A well, saint, you don't got to even lift your hand. God will put somebody else on them. God will put somebody else to fight your battle for you. Keisha texted me the other day, after Blue, I don't know what she was talking about. She would take so long, I can't only have to read all of them, but <laughs> so, <laughs> she would take so long. But, but I, read, I read a little bit of this, because it was, it, was, it was doing something to me when I read it. I loved it. Oh, my God. She said, Keisha said, she texted me the other day, she said, after blue, she said, I can tell you've changed. She said, you don't yell and scream like you used to. She said, you don't go off like you used to. She said, you, you, you're more patient than you used to. And when I was saying to myself, I learned my lesson. I saw other people around me always fussing if I start having strokes. I learned my lesson. I saw other people around me always letting people get under their skin and their hair started falling out. 
I learned my lesson. I saw other people around me huffing and puffing all the time and they started getting high blood pressure. I learned my lesson. If you can learn a lesson from God without taking a loss, you better run and say hallelujah. If you can look at other people's lives and learn your lesson, if you can look at what God do to non tithers and non givers and learn your lesson and don't have to go through that, you better run it and teach that lesson. If you see how God blessed the people that's given and prospering and elevated, if you see their lifestyle, but you better learn your lesson. I don't wait till I lose everything before I say, oh Lord, let me, if you give me one more time, Lord. Oh Lord, if you just, oh God, if you just, if you just, God, I, I'm coming back to church. If you don't wait till I lose everything, then say, I'm coming back to church. No, I stay in church. I don't wait till I lose everything, then I start praying. I stay praying. I told you before, I knew my pastor was going to die. You know what I knew he was going to die? He was so sick. In the church, they called for a prayer meeting. I said, oh, it's too late now to have a prayer meeting. We were supposed to have prayer every Saturday. Nobody came but me and a couple other people. Now y'all want to have a prayer meeting to save his life. God don't play those kind of games. It's too late to want to want to go have a prayer meeting when when you when you on your last breath when you should have been praying all along. Can't play with God. You got to be real in this thing all the time in order to reap the benefits that comes with being a child of God. Oh my God. If you can learn from somebody else's lesson without you going through that, baby, you better learn how to shout. <laughs> I said, oh man, oh God, let me fix my attitude. Let me stop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh man, yeah, let me let me stop responding to every crazy text message. Let me stop accusing everybody of everything. I like good blood pressure. My other brother was like, you, you don't take no medicine. I like not having to take any medicine. Because guess what? I learn from the people around me. I learn when they teaching and preaching the word and they still got bad attitude. I, I learn from that. I learned how to calm myself all the way down. Because it didn't look good going to visit somebody you love. With an avoidable issue, if we just learn how to stay in the peace of the Lord, preach Holy Ghost. Number three, Oprah got what she deserved. Not Oprah Winfrey, <laughs> but Oprah in the Bible. <laughs> Ruth's sister-in-law. Oprah got what she deserved. In Ruth 1, verse 14, and they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Oprah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth claimed unto her. They about to leave. Their mother-in-law said, y'all leave me. I can't have no more boys. And he said, y'all not going to wait. If I do have some baby, y'all not going to wait until they become 21, 25 years they become a grown man and get a good job. You ain't going to wait that long. Oprah said, you know what? You got a good point. Let me go find me some joke of my God that's, that's ready out the box. Ruth said, I don't care about no man. I want your God. I'm serving you. You my mother-in-law. I'm going to take care of you. I ain't worried about that. And she said, behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return unto thy sister-in-law. Ruth said, I ain't going. I'm staying with you. And look what Ruth got in Ruth 2.11. And Boaz answered and said unto her, it is been fully showed unto me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thy husband. And thou hast left thy father and thy mother in thy land of their nativity, and I come unto a people which thou know it not. He said, my God, I like that. He said, I want to marry you because not how beautiful you are, because how lower you are. I want Oprah didn't get a bow ass. I don't know who she got, and she probably got somebody. But let's like say I say she didn't give a heart. <laughs> she didn't get a Boaz. Whoever she married, it wouldn't Boaz. God won't bless you with the best, and you all about yourself. You're gonna end up with somebody just like you. You gonna get what you deserve. 
And if you are what you deserve, <laughs> tell them about you don't really want me. You don't really want me. You don't really want me. You don't know what you're going to get. You don't want me. <laughs> you're going to get what you deserve. If you are what you deserve, you'll get somebody just like you. If slick and ratchetness and low downness and can't be trusted and you double tongue and you don't mean what you say, if that's what you deserve, you're going to get exactly what you preach. Holy Ghost. <laughs> be great, I told you. Now, I know we live in a day and an age where, where we celebrate people marrying dogs and Kermit the Frog. But trust me, it does matter if you marry to Boaz or to Ruth. Because settling ends in sorrow. Settling ends in sorrow. So it does matter. Right now, we're in, we in a day and age where anybody don't run alone. Oh, I think I didn't celebrate. It will matter in the end. Because the race is not given to the swift. Good God Almighty. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Because one thing that I love about God is he always makes sure that everybody get what they deserve. Tell somebody, I want somebody that's loving and non-gossiping and tithing and hardworking and always praying and thriving just like me. I'd be saying that a hundred times if I was y'all. <laughs> All right, anybody say it. I was about it as loving and non gossiping and tithing and hard working and always praying and thriving just like me. Until I get what I deserve, I can wait on the Lord and be in good courage. And he shall strengthen. I don't know what y'all going through, but somebody ain't shouting. Y'all got to wait on you or something. Because somebody's something shouting. I don't know what you're thinking about. That's a good place for a shout right there. That's a good place for a hallelujah. Somebody, you thinking. <laughs> somebody thinking kind of thing. Oh, 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 oh. Until you get what you deserve, what you rushing for. Don't harass me. If you don't deserve me. <laughs> Somebody text me that because they didn't know my papers. <laughs> I'm going to say it one more time. Tell somebody, don't harass me if you don't deserve me. If you deserve me, I'll break my neck and run to you. If you deserve me, I'll break my neck and give you the word. If you deserve me, I will break my neck to supply all your needs according to God's riches. If you if you deserve if you if you if you, if you deserve me, if you deserve me. See, see, don't let people match you with other people because they don't know what you deserve. Text me that keys and text me that. Don't let people match you. No. If you like them so much, you gonna marry them. They got license where everybody want to be married. If you think they saw everything, you go marry her. Don't let people match you because what they think you deserve, tell about, I deserve even more than that. I deserve even better than that. Oh, baby, I don't go by her what it looked like. Oh, God. I'm trying to finish. I'm trying. Tell somebody, I'm going to get what I deserve, baby. I'm going to get what I deserve. I ain't that desperate that I got to settle and cry myself to sleep all night. I got a lot of love in my life. I can... Tell me, I got a lot of love in my life already. You better step up your game, baby. You better show what you worth in this thing because I'm going to get what I deserve. Tell me, I, I'm going to get what I deserve. I'm, I'm going to get what I deserve. I work too hard for this. I pray too much for this. I bless too much for this. Just to give it away to people that don't deserve it. Baby, you don't cry too much. Huh? You got too many prayers on your altar just to give it away to folks that don't deserve it. Somebody got to get what I deserve. 
that I got to get well deserved. I settled long enough. Oh, I paid with the wrong people long enough. Oh, that I deserve another level. I deserve to be blessed in highly favor. I deserve what I deserve. Because I, mean, I deserve what I deserve. I deserve what I deserve. I deserve. I deserve what I deserve. I ain't no bad person. I ain't no shyster. I ain't wrong. You got too many bad characteristics. I deserve. I deserve somebody that, that means what they say and don't change what they say. I deserve somebody that I can trust. I deserve somebody that I believe in. I deserve somebody that support me just as much as I support. So you better match him with somebody you don't like. You better match him with a fool. You better match him with somebody that can't see through their game. You better match him with somebody that's desperate, baby. But I, I'm going to get what I just... That's about I'm going to get what... Oh, I ain't hard to get. I ain't hard to get. It just takes a lot to get me. Melissa. Just about ain't hard to get. It just takes a lot to get me. It takes a lot of understanding. It takes a lot of praying. It takes a lot of fasting. It takes a lot of praise to get. Big Red, I told you there was your word. <laughs> Tell them about it. Oh, I, just, I just got to get what I deserve. I just got to get what I deserve. I don't deserve crybabies. I don't deserve complainers. I don't deserve people that have had her. I don't deserve crying in the roof. I don't deserve all this junk and mess. I, I deserve the, 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 the best. I beg them. I tell them. I forewarn them. All you got to do is ABCD. All you got to do. Stay home. Do what God say do. Don't, don't, don't have that spirit. You bring the curse. Don't have that spirit. God don't like that. Folks ain't used to dealing with prophets. Like Big Mama said, that's why they don't believe fat meat grease. Because they ain't used to dealing with folks huh, that can see God coming before we leave the room. Tell me, I can see God coming huh, before the smoke come in the room. Huh. I can see God moving before the cloud huh, gets dispersed. Huh.